habit are two important phenomena in plant sciences these are the major groups of plants the lowest category of land plants include algae then bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms are the highest evolved plants heterospore originated in ferns and seed habit originated in gymnosperms it is said that the seed habit that is there in gymnosperms is because of the heterospore which originated in and evolved in pteridophytes of ferns these are the different uh, groups of plants we have bryophytes the non vascular plants pteridophytes the seedless vascular plants where you can see the origin of heterospore gymnosperms are the first group of plants which showed the seed habit they produce naked seeds and the seeds were produced directly uh, without the presence of any ovary they were produced outside the ovary in case of angiosperms seeds were produced inside the ovary and hence it is called the group is called angiosperms this is the picture to show you the origin and evolution of different groups of plants and we are now concerned about origin of heterospore and seed habits the seed habit it is said that was originated around 300 million years back and the first group of plants which exhibited seed habit was gymnosperms most of the pteridophytes produce one kind of, of spores and they are called homosporous but some pteridophytes produce two types of spores and that is called heterosporous plant and two types of spores are called heterospores microspores and megaspores microspores produce male gametophyte megaspores produce female gametophyte the adoption of heterospore and the retention and germination of a single megaspore within the megasporangium to form a female gametophyte led to the phenomenon called seed habit a characteristic feature of spermatophytes which include gymnosperms and angiosperms a seed is that ovule which contains an embryo developed as a result of fertilization seed habit is considered as the most advanced and successful method of sexual reproduction adopted by terrestrial plants mostly you can see here the uh, diagram to depict the heterospores or heterospore uh, i've taken the example of selaginella where microspores and megaspores are produced in this single strobilus these are the steps involved in the evolution of seed habit ancestors pteridophytes like for example uh, xylotum produced one type of spores they are called homosporous and even the fossil pteridophyte rhinia produced only one type of spores uh, in the course of evolution pteridophytes started producing two different types of spores is called heterospore they produce microspores and megaspores and the reduction of megaspore development occurred in the next stage and finally it led to the formation of seed habit where in gymnosperms the plants started producing the female gametophyte enclosed by nucellus and enclosed by integuments and thus the origin of seed habit came into existence and thus it is said that heterospore has led to the formation of seed habit so pteridophytes are both homosporous and heterosporous the best examples for heterosporous ferns or pteridophytes are selaginella isoites marsilia salvinia azola so these plants produce two types of spores and the condition is called heterospore there are three theories in support of heterospore and the development of seed habit the three theories are paleobotanical evidences developmental studies and experimental studies this is the periodic table 
where you can see on the right hand side the origin and evolution of plants and animals. It is said that during the Devonian period the heterospory originated. During the Devonian period there were many species that utilized vertical growth to capture more light. Heterospory and separate sporangia probably evolved in response to compensation for light. Disruptive selection within species resulted in there being two separate sexes of gametes or even the whole plant. This may first have led to the increase in spore size in case of megaspores and decrease in size of spores in case of microspore and this has led to the origin of heterospory. It this eventually led to the formation of seed habit. There are microspores and there are megaspores. As we all know, microspores produce male gametophyte and megaspores produce female gametophyte. Uh, you are seeing here the vertical section of the strobilus of Selaginella, where there are microspores produced in microsporangia, megaspores produced in megasporangia. But two other important phenomena that we must understand that is exosporic germination of spores and endosporic germination of spores and these two phenomena are also important in the origin of seed habit. Exosporic germination of spores occurs outside the sporangia in the soil. It is found in pteridophytes whereas the gametophyte is independent. The endosporic development takes place within the spore as it occurs in case of seed plants that is gymnosperms and angiosperms. Here you are seeing exospory in uh, bryophytes also in ferns and here you are seeing endospory the development of spores within the uh, within the megasporangium. This is seen in case of uh, gymnosperms and this same feature was later also seen in angiosperms. Uh, there are three theories and evidences to um, support the concept of heterospory. One is paleobotanical evidence. It has been suggested that heterospory arose due to the degeneration of some spores in few sporangia. As more nutrition becomes available to a smaller number of spores, the surviving spore grew better, hence increase in their size. Paleobotanical evidence has shown that the earlier vascular plants were all homosporous and the heterosporous condition originated somewhere during Devonian period. And some of the fossils which first exhibited heterospory are Calamostachys. According to Williamson and Scott, two species of the genus Calamostachys are said to be the initial stage of the development of heterospory. This is a paleobotanical evidence in support of heterospory. Uh, when it comes to the uh, support from developmental studies, it is studied that the microspores and megaspore follow the same pattern. They have identical organization but for their size, while in megasporangia most of the uh, mother cells degenerate. But in microsporangia all spore mother cells will, will develop into microspores. Thus some of the megaspores which develop are larger in size. When it comes to the experimental studies related to origin of heterospory, Giebel in 1905 and Stackert in 1910, they studied and they saw, they observed that nutritional factors mainly govern the heterospory. Under conditions of low light intensity, the photosynthetic activity of Selaginella was retarded and it gave rise to the formation of only microsporangia. What is the biological significance of heterospory? The development of female gametophyte starts while the megaspore is still inside. Same is true with microspores. They also start germinating into male gametophyte while they are still inside the microsporangium. The female gametophyte derives its nutrition from the sporophyte. Female gametophyte is dependent on sporophyte for its nutrition. The dependence of female gametophyte and sporophyte for its nutrition provides better starting point for the development of new embryo than independent green prothallus which has to be which has to manufacture which has to manufacture its own food. 
The origin of seed habit is associated with the following four factors. One, production of two types of spores, that is heterospore, reduction in the number of megaspores, finally to one per megasporangium, retention and germination of megaspores and fertilization of the egg, continued development of the fertilized egg into the embryo while still it is inside the megasporangium. Even though most of these conditions are there in pteridophytes, still the pteridophytes don't produce seeds. The seed habit originated only in uh, gymnosperms. The reason why pteridophytes don't produce seeds are megasporangium is not surrounded by the integument. The embryo immediately gives rise to sporophyte without undergoing a resting period. So these are the reasons why the seeds are not developed in pteridophytes even though it has got most of the features required for the development of seed habits.